Folks, welcome back. Somehow I told you so, it just doesn't cut it anymore. For the past few weeks on this channel, I've made multiple videos on this exact topic, urging you to buy Surging Sparks, telling you this time is different. I had a live stream with Pokey Plumber on the channel where we talked hours about this same subject. I've been on Eli Pokemart USA's channel every Tuesday, multiple live streams, talking hours, urging people, times are changing. And every step of the way, I've been met with certain people that have pushed back, saying, Alex, you're causing FOMO for the sake of causing FOMO. Stop it. This is unnecessary fear. This set will be available everywhere around the regular retail price. It's not short printed. My brother-in-law, he runs a TCG shop out of the old Radio Shack that no one's used since 2000. And he got all of his 10 boxes that he ordered. So therefore, no one else got short printed. You're lying. And I just kind of let it all stir. I sat back and I watched as the market went higher and higher and higher. And now we have, you know, $140, $150 booster boxes on eBay. And, you know, $860 to $900 cases on eBay. And Pokemon Center now has sold out at full MSRP, baby. Meaning, booster boxes, gone. PC ETBs, nope. Booster bundles, sleep blister packs, you name it, they're all sold out over a week before the set even releases. And now it's finally setting into people. Maybe Alex knew what he was talking about. Maybe this market isn't the same as the market that's been here for the last three, six, nine, twelve months. And it's only going to get worse. So we're going to talk about it a little bit. But first, I got to shout out today's video sponsor. It is Arizona TCG. Guys, if you're looking for a consignment service here at PSA, BGS, and CGC Slabs, you can send everything to Arizona TCG. They'll send you a big old check when they sell, and you wipe your hands clean of them. They run everything through their 100% positive feedback, over 12,000 items sold, over 2,000 follower eBay store. They have very transparent fees of only 13.5%, which is about the same, if not better, than what it's going to take you to do all the work and ship everything yourself. And so if that's something you're looking to take advantage of, make sure to check them out. The link will be in the description and the comment section below. Guys, to say everything has now changed is an understatement. And I'll explain to you what I mean. The days of finding 80, 90, $100 booster boxes, they're over. They're gone. And I'll explain to you why. If you were a store owner, you did this as a business, why in the world would you sell a box for $100 or less when you've now seen the demand of the people are willing to pay 120, 130, 140 pre-release. What sense would it mean to make the discount things? The only reason stores discount things is to move product. People run sales to move product that they can't otherwise move. If the product's moving faster than keep it on their shelves at a higher price, they're not going to lower the price. Are you crazy? You think Team Rocket is going to be $100 a booster box? Guys, here's how it works. Stores order more product than they want from distributors in order to build a relationship with those distributors so that when these times come around, they can still get all of that good product and make huge amounts of profits on it. Whereas before, they were just dumping things to let them go. They were either breaking even, some were taking a little loss, some were making a little bit, just to get rid of the inventory to get their capital back, and they would hold what little bit of inventory they wanted, and they would raise the price with the market as it went up. But when everything's selling this fast, they have no reason to discount it because they're going to get rid of it just as fast anyway, no matter what they put the price at, 110, 120, 130, it's selling. And so the days of people saying, well, I don't need a distributor. I can just buy on Safari Zone. I can just buy on eBay. I can just buy here or here or here. Those days are gone. Be having a distributor is now going to be a benefit. We're already seeing distribution programs, people who offer uh, distributor pricing for a monthly fee every month. Their programs are getting overrun right now with people trying to join. The owners of these, I talked to them, they're raising their price every single month at this point to try to deter people from joining because too many people are joining. And then you'll have too many people in the program and not enough product to go around to everybody that everyone's getting cut on their, their numbers. And it's a mess right now, guys. There's not enough product to go around for everyone that wants it, much less the regular consumer. By the way, let's talk about them. I've seen videos now, TikTok, YouTube shorts, of Costco pallets being cleaned out in minutes right after the person puts them off that forklift jack and pulls away. They're gone. Like, just straight gone. And 
The same thing's happening at Walmart. You'll see full carts full of the whole Pokemon section now. Right when it gets stocked, people are just throwing everything in their cart again. Everything is just returning to pandemic times. And we don't have even Logan Paul or celebrities running it. We don't have a worldwide virus scaring everybody. We don't have free money from the government. We don't have anything running this market except like little things. I wouldn't say there's one big catalyst. Everyone always thought there would be like a big catalyst that would cause this to happen again. There's no catalyst, right? There's the, the TCG Pocket app, right? There's 151, there's Surging Sparks. There's, you know, that, that uh, TCG card shop simulator a lot of the streamers are playing. You know, there's a lot of little things going on, but I wouldn't say there's one big thing that's causing this big run. You, you could say the stock market and crypto are on a run right now, and there's a lot of correlations with the crypto market and the Pokemon market, but a lot of this, guys, is truly organic demand, right? You can't manipulate a brand new set, okay? As much as all you guys want to believe in all these conspiracy theories, and look, I like conspiracy theories too. I, I'm with you, but if you knew how much product was actually printed on these sets... You cannot manipulate them without billionaires, okay? You can't manipulate them the way that people think. The reason prices are rising so fast, the reason things are selling out, is you have such an influx of demand worldwide that are all buying this product. They're all pulling their money together to the Pokemon hobby, and they're buying anything they can get their hands on. Then you have the streamers. And this is why you start, you're starting to see the sleeve blister cases go through the roof, the ETBs go through the roof. Streamers are panicking. Trust me, I know. I'm one of them. I've talked to some of them. They're panicking. They're not going to have Surging Sparks to open. Because here's the thing, guys. This set is more hype than ever. It's going to be opened more than ever. Probably more than 151 at this point. And if you don't have the packs, you can't run your business. Because people go through hundreds, if not a thousand packs a day on some of these streams. And you can just kind of do the math of how much product you need if you're streaming five, six, seven days a week and you're going through hundreds of packs every single night, it's getting scary. And the streamers don't care because if they have to pay more for the packs. They're just going to raise the price of the packs on their streams and everyone's just going to pay more. And who knows where it's going to end, right? I mean, I don't know. 151 packs are nine, 10, $11 and they're still getting sold out. So maybe Surging Sparks can run to the same price per pack. I don't know at this point. I'm not trying to cause fear or FOMO. I'm telling you like it is. Some people don't like to hear it like it is. And I already know there's people in the comment section typing right now, Alex, they're going to reprint this into the ground. They reprint everything. Yeah, just like they reprinted Team Up, right? Same, same way? Is that how they do it? Right? How they reprinted Sword and Shield Base? They reprint that? I mean, do you want me to go down the line and talk about all the sets in history? Pokemon is not reprinted. They will not reprint every single set in Scarlet Violet era. I'm just going to throw that out there. May I be wrong? Sure. I doubt it. They cannot keep up with the demand for everything they have now. I know people think like these workers at the Pokemon printing facility are all sitting there like reading the newspaper with their feet up. No one's working. Pokemon's just like shutting down for weeks on end, turning the lights off. Go on vacation, guys. We're not going to print any product. Let's really swell up this market. Come on. Let's get this going, baby. No. They are working nonstop. They physically cannot put out enough products. You've seen the new collection boxes they released at Walmart or Costco or Sam's Club or wherever, right? Those are all new products that they just printed, right? They're, they're constantly restocking things everywhere. Guys, think about this. There is there's a cap to how much you can print. There's a cap to how many hours are in a day. The cards have to all get printed through the line, okay? They have to all get cut. They have to all get packaged into packs. They have to all get packaged into whatever product they're in. Those have to go into boxes. The boxes have to be shipped out. The shipping takes time. Then the shipping gets to the distributors or the stores. They have to have their employees all, you know, mark them in, all put them on the retail shelves. Then the people can finally start to get the products and open them or break them down, whatever it may be. And then you have to start the process over again. Not to mention, they have, what, 10, 11 sets now in the arrow going on more that they have to keep up with? And people think that there's, like, some big conspiracy about Pokemon, like, trying to make artificial scarcity. We're the ones making the scarcity. We are over-consuming a product that is not infinite. It's infinite in the fact that they could print it for our whole lifetime, but they can't print infinite amounts of it every single day. And like I told you, there is a million dollars plus of this product being opened daily just by streamers. Then you got the casual hobbyists, you got the game stores, you got everyone else, which is adding to that number. Then you got people that are investing in the product, putting it away. You got collectors who are just keeping the product. 
And so much is being taken away from the market and not enough is being added to it. And that's why Surging Sparks is just the beginning. Terrestrial Festival is going to be the exact same way. Get your hands on it while you can. It's not going to be at this price. Team Rocket, if you can find it anywhere near $100, snap by it. Snap by it. Thank me later. Will it get reprinted? Will all the stuff get reprinted? Maybe. But in my opinion, Surging Sparks, we're already seeing close to $900 a case. I thought that was going to take till the end of the year. I was wrong again. I always underestimate it. I'm going to go ahead and call probably $1,200 a case by the end of the year. $180 to $220 a booster box. And then if it gets reprinted, you're dreaming if you think it's coming down to $100. You are dreaming. Alex, I've seen boxes do it before. Yeah, you have. You have. Not in these kind of markets, though. You didn't see anything reprinted in the middle of the pandemic come down that low, right? You saw things at the end of the pandemic, right? You saw things reprinted at the end of 2021 going into 2022 when everything was coming down and that high was wearing off. That's what crashed Chilling Rain Battle Thousand Fusion Strike, right? It didn't, it didn't crash things during the pandemic. We're during this bull market. You're not going to have reprints crash things during a bull market. Now, in a year and a half, two years, if everything starts to wind down and this euphoria starts to get let out of everyone and then they start reprinting heavily, yeah, then you could see some things fall down pretty, pretty sizably. But in my opinion, we are still six months, a year, a year plus into this bull run that we have left. Um, you know, just looking at Terrestrial Festival, looking at Team Rocket, looking at the partner Pokemon coming back, Pokemon hyping up the next era, hyping up Mega Evolutions. Like, they have so many tools. They have so much ammunition that they, they're prepared to throw at this market to keep that hype cycle going that I don't think we can kill it. I legitimately do not think there's enough supply that could get released on this market right now to slow things down. I mean, you talk to anyone who has a business right now, and I don't care what business it is. It could be sealed product. It could be singles and slabs. It could be a streaming business. I don't care what it is, a content business. All the numbers are up to all-time highs for most people. Everyone. I mean, I can tell you myself, right? My views are higher than they've ever been, right? The subscribers are growing higher than they've ever been. We get more people wanting to jump in on the pack breaks more than we ever have. We sell out pretty much every night. I mean, it takes me longer and longer to even ship all these orders because there's so many coming in, right? Um, every time I wake up now, and I don't even have a lot listed, the little bit I do have listed on my eBay, I have sales every single day of things that maybe would have sat for months in a different market are now selling immediately. And it's just a sign of the times, guys. This is where we're at. And you can either do two things. You can bury your head in the sand and deny it and say, everyone is just irrational, they shouldn't be paying that much for this stuff. It's not even rare. You know what? Let me stop there. Let me, let me, I talk about this a lot, but I know I have a lot of new subscribers. Let me explain to you rarity. Rarity means nothing. Zero. And anyone out there trying to talk up, talk up their boxes or their cars because of rarity, don't even listen to those people. Guys, let me explain to you what rarity is. It is literally just a figure to determine how much of something there is out there. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Here, if I take a, a basic energy card and I sign my name on it, guess what? That's a one of one. That is, that is one of the most rare cards in the entire planet. It's right up there with all the one of one serialized sports cards. It's right up there with the magic lotus. Or not the lotus. What was it? The, the, the one ring. One of one. And so people will try to use rarity as a reason that it should be assigned value. But value comes from two things. It comes from rarity if there's enough demand and people out there that actually want the item. If there's an item that's so scarce or so niche and no one knows about it, it can have a lot less value from something that's very common but has large amounts of demand, such as like an Evolving Skies booster box, right? You could say that's a lot more common than some you know old vintage car that's 25 years old that has a Pop 100 that's selling for $800 as well. And people will say, Alex, there's thousands of Evolving Skies boxes out there. Why would someone buy that than this one of 100? Because no one likes that thing. The rarity only matters if people like it. Now, the reason things like the one ring from Magic is so valuable or some of these one of one, you know, rookie cards from sports are so valuable is they got both. They've got the rarity and they've got the demand. And when you put both of those together, then you go to the moon. But you can't do one without the other. And so stop worrying about 
all of these boxes not being rare enough or these cards not being rare enough. Alex Moonbrion shouldn't be selling for $1,600 in a PSA 10. There's 10,000 out there. Yeah, Timmy, go ahead and explain to me how one of the most sought after cards in all of modern Pokemon from the most sought after sets that there's not at least 10, 12, 15,000 people in the entire freaking world that want that card and are willing to pay $1,500 for it. Sounds pretty stupid now, doesn't it? Because I can probably think off the top of my head of hundreds of people that want that card in their collection. And I'm just some dude in Missouri. Now, now we got the U.S. Now we got the, the entire planet of collectors. And English is the most collected language. And you don't think there's 10, 12, 15,000 people that want a PSA 10 Moonbrion? You're insane. And, and your head plays tricks on you, right? You see numbers, and because of your own, you know, judgment, you assign that, you, you give the strength to that number, right? You can either say, well, that still sounds low to me, or you can say that's extremely high, it shouldn't be valuable. But it's all in your head, right? The market sets the price. You're, you're the one that talks yourself out of the market. And so, going forward, guys, I don't know how high this is going to go. In my opinion, it's going to continue to run because the market's too strong, the demand's too strong, everybody's running out of product, no one has it, the streamers need it, the collectors want it. It's most likely going to go to 200 plus a box. Cases are probably going to go to 1200 plus. A reprint probably will come at some point. It won't be strong enough to knock it down too, too low. I would guess if a reprint does come, it'd probably end up in the 120s, 130s, 140s because it's likely distributors will not sell it to stores at the same price they sold this first wave to. Um... And so how to play it, unfortunately, if you want a Surging Sparks box, $140, it may not be the worst option out there. Could you find it cheaper in the future? Maybe. Is it going to be much cheaper? Probably not. Going forward to Team Rocket and Terrestrial Festival, the EV Illusion set, if you want those sets, I would buy early. I would buy on pre-release. I wouldn't wait until they come out or they get one week before release and you start scrambling. I think if you do, you're going to be too late. If you need some more data to prove this, just go on YouTube and search videos back like four years ago, right during the middle of the pandemic, and see what was happening to boxes as they were being released and what price they were being released at, right? Go watch how Battle Styles, one of the worst sets at All of Sword and Shield, was still 150 to 200 at release. Go watch that. Go watch Vivid Voltage running up to over $200, right? These are sets that aren't even strong. Can you imagine how bad a strong set's going to be? That's all I got, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be back here in a new one soon. I'm out.